folks, and you need to know each other. Amen? These times we're living in, we need each other. Amen? We need to know each other. We need to lean on each other and, and, and help one another through everything of life. So please, don't, don't miss next Sunday at Bill River Gorge. We won't be here. We'll be there at 12, starting an hour later. But don't worry. You're, you might be an hour later, but your lunch is there. Okay? So you don't have to run around and find lunch and, and all of that. And, and there'll be something for everybody there. And, and so in, come and enjoy that next Sunday, 12 o'clock at Doe River. Go with me to the word of the Lord in John chapter 5 this morning. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches, five areas around the pool. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time in the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying, I don't care if your condition was a year ago or if it's been 38 years. Amen. 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 Come on. He was there 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he'd already had been in that condition a long time. What you need to understand, when Jesus comes to the appointed time of your life, he knows your condition. Amen. Amen. He knows your condition. He'd been in that condition a long time. He said to him, do you want to be made well? He didn't say, can you? He said, do you want to? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> do you want to be made well? And the sick man answered, Sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take your, your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. The title of the message I'd like to share with you for just a few minutes this morning before they come back and we finish this thing and worship, whatever God wants to do. It simply is the appointed time. Father, we love you and we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the testimony. Lord, we thank you for just sharing, Lord, and leading us into this moment now. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your guidance and your direction. In our frailties and our weaknesses, Father, you are the strength yes. in the moment. And we thank you. Now, Father, I pray that you would teach your word as you see fit for your glory. No man's agenda, but that of the Holy Spirit this hour. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Ecclesiastes 3 says this, for everything there is a season, a time for what? Every activity. There is an appointed time for every activity. Come on, amen? A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to harvest, a time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to tear down, a time to build up, a time to cry, and a time to laugh, a time to grieve, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to turn away, a time to search, and a time to quit searching, a time to keep, and a time to throw away. A lot of us need to get a hold of that nowadays, don't we? Tammy Bowden does. She's got eight different Christmas trees. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm joking. She does, though. I haven't removed a time to tear and a time to mend. I'm messing with you today. We grew up a long time ago together. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. This is foundational teaching in our lives that we must always understand. Because we want to rush things and we want to lack things and we want to do things in our time and our way a lot of times. But listen to me. There is a perfected time for every activity under heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Get that. There's a time for everything. Go with me to Hebrews 4 as we begin to teach it here in the midweek service this week. Talking about moving into the promise of his rest. Hebrews 4 says this. God's promise of entering his rest still stands. God's promise of entering His rest still stands. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. For this is good news that God has prepared this rest, has been announced to us just as it was to them, but it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. 
For only we who believe can enter his rest. Takes faith, amen? Takes faith, to, amen? To believe. As for the others, God said, in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest, even though his rest has been ready since he made the world. We know it is ready because of the place in the scriptures where it mentions the seventh day. On the seventh day, God rested from all his work. But in the other passage, God said, they will never enter my place of rest. So God's rest is there for people to enter. But those who first heard this good news failed to enter because what? The failure to enter this place called God's rest. And I know we speak of God's rest in a day of to come in eternity. I believe that. But I also believe that His rest is for us today. Because there's a world age way and there's a kingdom way. Can somebody say amen? There's a people that strive and run around worrying what they're going to eat, drink, and wear. And then there's a people that God says, if I take care of the birds and the flowers of the field, how much more will I take care of you? There's, listen to me, there, there, there's two different people running around. They're called believers and unbelievers. Amen? And what I believe God desires to do in this last day is show such a stark difference between His glory and the darkness that's trying to overcome. And he wants to show such a difference. Amen? Why? Because we're in the last days. And in these last days, we must see a great harvest. Amen? Time is drawing near. There's a time of tribulation that will come upon the earth in these last moments. I believe in God's mercy once again. He's showing this, the difference between light and darkness. He's showing a, a drastic difference between His glory and the darkness. And He's telling His people, it's time to cross over into this thing called His rest. It's already been prepared. It's been waiting for you. Amen. You can continue to strive and run around and worry, worry, worry and wonder, wonder, wonder. Or you can rest in the promise of God that says tomorrow when I need something to eat, He'll put it on the table. Tomorrow when I need something to wear, I'll go to the closet and there'll be something. Amen. Come on. Now, how does He do this? He does it in different ways. He, he moves us into different careers and different avenues. But listen to me. He does it. Amen. You don't have to sit and worry and, 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 just, and just fret over every little move. Do you not realize that Psalm 139 still stands today? You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. He knew you when you were formed in your mother's womb. And he wrote every page of your life already. Amen. He has it all in his hands. And he says, don't be like unbelievers running around worrying and acting. He says, I have a rest for you. He says, come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. Take my yoke upon you. Amen. He says, come up together with me. Be led of my voice. Go where I tell you to go. Enter into my what? Rest. Amen. You'll find rest. Come on. So God's rest is there for the people to enter. But those who first heard this good news failed to enter because what? They disobeyed God. So God said another time for entering His rest, and that time is what? There's a time for every activity under heaven. Amen. God's fixing to move His people into things beyond people's imagination. And you're going to start getting questioned, how in the world did that take place? And you're going to say, unto Him, <laughs> who is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Amen. This is what God desires to do is to manifest His glory through His people that they might see and declare the Lord He is God. Amen. This is His desire to manifest His glory. So God said another time for ending His rest and that time is today. God announced through David much later in the words already quoted. Today when you hear His voice, don't harden your hearts. Amen. There's a, an appointed time. Amen. And he's saying today is the day to enter into rest. Now let's move. John 5. After this there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem there's a sheep gate by a pool. A sheep gate a pool which is called Hebrew Bethesda having five porches. This is where the sick folks lay. Now a certain man who was there who had an infirmity 38 years. 
eventually he heard the voice of the Lord. Amen. 38 years. You see this place and this pool of Bethesda was near the sheep head. You know, and this is a place that was kind of uh, 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 just on the inside of the city wall or somebody just on the outside of the city wall where the sheep gate was. What's the sheep gate? The sheep gate is where they, they bring in the sheep that are going to be led up to the temple for sacrifice. The sheep gate kind of represents the point of no return, right? And this is the place... That, that this thing called this pool of Bethesda and, and, and there was a belief and, and there's all kind of different studies you can do on that pool of what was actually taking place there but this is what we understand people had a belief that once the waters were stirred that once if you had a, 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 a paralyzation a sickness a disease if you could just get to the water that you would be healed of that infirmity this is the place where, where, where the, the, the people that, that didn't have these sort of things, the people that didn't face these things, that they weren't there. But this is the place where they allowed those people to be. They were kind of off and away from everything that was going on. They were kind of out of sight, out of mind, if you will, a little bit over north of the temple and the, near the city gate there, the city, excuse me, the city wall near the sheep gate. And there was this man there that the Bible says had the infirmity for 38 years. And then he heard a voice. Why is it that I hark week in and week out in this call? You need to be in the secret place. You must be before God. I'm not talking about a 10 to 15 minute devotion a day that, that, that just kind of does a religious motion of sort of thing so you can ease your conscience that you've spoke with the Lord. There is something still good about the sweet hour of prayer. Well, I don't have time. Then you're never going to be able to understand the voice of God. East Tennessee has a problem when you say, I hear the voice of God. Why? Because East Tennessee a lot of times is eat up with a ton of religion. A ton of religious motion. But listen to me. If you'll, come on. How do you know? How do I know what Samantha's desire is in through me to try to help her in our marriage and our family life? Is we communicate. Amen. Amen. You've got to know the first things first. You've got to be able to understand the voice of the Lord. How do I know the voice of the Lord, Pastor? You've got to spend some time with Him. Amen. I don't care if you don't have a fancy prayer to pray or don't have a word at all to pray. If you'll just go and in that hour, in that secret place, and sit down and say, Lord, I don't have anything to say. I'm just going to wait on you for whatever you got to say. Come on. He'll speak to your heart. The problem is, is we don't spend time to establish that line of communication. We go about our everyday thing and all the things that we do that says we're good people. I don't want to be. I want, come on. I want to be where God wants me to be. I want to do what He wants me to say. I want to, I want to do what He wants me to do. Amen? How am I going to know that? Jesus declares that the Father loves the Son. And so the Father tells the Son what He's doing. You, you remember the passage of Scripture. How, how many knows that you're a son, you're a daughter of the Most High, and He loves you, and He'll tell you what He's doing. Come on. Well, I'm not a preacher. You don't have to be. You just got to be a son or a daughter. Can somebody say amen? Amen. You can hear the voice of the Lord. You can know the will of the Lord. You can walk in the will of the Lord. But you got to know His voice. It says right here, after 38 years, He heard the voice. What did the Bible say about entering into rest? Today when you hear His voice, what? Don't harden your heart. This man had a heart condition that was a bit hardened. After 38 years, He heard the voice. Look with me right here in Hebrews 3. Be careful then. We're going to jump back into our main story. We'll stay there. But I've got to get this back to you. Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and what? Unbelieving. Turn, turn, turning you away from the living God. You must warn each other every day while it is still today so that none of you will be deceived and by sin and harden against God. For if we are faithful to the entrusting God as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. Remember what it says today? Listen now. We're going to get somewhere in just a minute. And it's called the appointed time that's coming to your life. The appointed time. 
Today when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. And who was it who rebelled against God even though they heard his voice? Wasn't it the people Moses led out of Egypt? And who made God angry for 40 years? Wasn't it the people who sinned, whose corpses lay in the wilderness? And to whom was God speaking when he took an oath that they would never enter his rest? Wasn't it the people who what? Disobeyed him? So we see that because of their unbelief, they were not able to enter into rest. They were disobedient. Amen. And we'll talk about it again. Even and, and there's so many times. I mean, pick a time, right? When the children of Israel were disobedient. I mean, the Old Testament's full of. But there was a particular time in Numbers 13 when you know that they had the, the opportunity, the appointed time to initially cross over into the promised land. But they were disobedient. Why? Because of their unbelief. Amen. Listen to me. I've been sent here to tell you this morning there's an appointed time that's coming to your life very quickly. An appointed time. It will come by the voice of the Lord. Amen. What's your instruction to us, Pastor? Believe and obey. Unbelief leads to a place of disobedience. So if, and y'all know that God told me to leave my job. Y'all know that. And we're in the process of that being done. I got one day to process out in three weeks from now. It's, I don't have to go back for three weeks. I go back on the 14th, process out, and it's, a, it's over with. 20 years of the chapter of my life is out. Why did I do that? By the voice of the Lord. Did anybody tell you the Kurt? No. Mm -mm. I was in the secret place. And I prayed one day and the Holy Spirit was speaking through my heart as a prayer to the Father. And my prayer was this, Father, give me freedom to follow. That was it. And that's the rest of the story. Give me freedom to follow. He gave me instruction of when to cross. Everything is lining up. Hallelujah. Already entering into his rest. Hallelujah. Already had a meeting with a man that says you need medical coverage. Go shop for insurance. We'll take care of the bill until something else works out. That's called God's rest. I met a man this weekend that came to me and said, God spoke to me over and over and over and I can't throw it out. He said for me to send your family $300 a month until he tells me to quit. This is real life. I, I, Joe, I ain't giving you some sort of something to let you know that, that, that you can do. Come on, this is actually happening in my life. What is it that I'm entering into? Rest. Amen. Amen. Rest. Come on, entering into God's rest. What does that look like for me? Does that mean I need to leave my job? I'm not telling you to leave your job. You better know you heard the voice of the Lord if you do something like that. Trust me. It's intense. You better know. But when the voice of the Lord comes to your life, you know what He's desiring to do. When He's coming in a moving way in your life and He's saying, move in this direction, He's putting you in position that His glory can flow through your life. I, did I have to go beat the bushes to figure out something about medical coverage or to figure out about finances? Not one minute. He's already doing it. I just got to walk in it. If he comes to me tomorrow and says, you need to do this 10 hours a week because this, I'll do that 10 hours a week. Come on, somebody. Amen. I, you move by the voice of the Lord because he's moving you into a place called rest because his kingdom will flow through your heart and life. And then people will say, my God. You don't know how many people have come to me over the last week and said, man, that faith that you're walking is inspiring me. There's movement happening in other people's lives. Amen. That's not me. I'm not doing anything except being obedient. That's it. And I can only do that by His grace because trust me. In my flesh, I'd have said, no way, Jose. Oh, it ain't happening. You know, in my flesh. But by His grace and by His strength, Amen. But see, if I didn't believe that God wouldn't take care of me where He was leading me to go to, 
Amen. There ain't no way, God. Then that unbelief would have birthed what? Disobedience. And it says here in Romans 3 that in unbelief, disobedience produced and they did not what? Enter into God's rest. Amen. Come on. Let's go back to John 5. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he'd already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred. We can come up with all kinds of excuses. I've been there 20 years, God. Come on, amen. I've got this and that. I got, I got, I'm almost maxed out on vacation. I, I, there's no way I can get laid off. I'm in the top this and I'm in the top that. Lord, I, Amen. His answer to Jesus was this. I have no man to put me in the pool when the water stirred up. But while I'm coming, another steps down before me. After 38 years, he hears a voice. Amen. After, I don't know how long you've been in your condition. Or where you've been in your position over, over. But I'm telling you, there's a voice in an appointed time coming to your heart and life. Don't give excuse. Get up and move. Because there's a rest and glory on the other side of that thing. Amen. His answer was this. I don't currently have anybody. And I haven't had anybody for many years. We make excuse all the time. As to why we can't move forward from our place of dwelling. We make excuses all the time. Well, it's because that, that I had to go through this. Or I had to go through divorce. Or I had to go through addiction. Or, or my mom and daddy was mean to me growing up. I didn't have a daddy. I didn't have a mom. I didn't have... We make all kinds of excuses as to why. And Jesus says this. Today when you hear his voice. Don't. Harden your heart. Some of those things that we go through that, that, that we get ourselves in is kind of self-inflicted. Some of us are totally innocent. Amen. Wasn't your fault that your parents abused you coming up? It wasn't. Amen. I hate that things like that happen. I hate that children get introduced to so many things that mess up their life. I, it just, it, it's terrible. But I serve the God of the breakthrough. And I serve a God that says, I don't care if you've been in it for the last 38 years, that dwelling place that is now, that your condition that has, that has now dictated your dwelling place. He said, there's an appointed time coming to your life. The voice. And he says, when you hear my voice, no heart in your heart. I can't do this or I can't. I'm too old to do that, Father. I, I'm too young to do. Come on, listen to me. You're not too young and not too old. Come on. My condition, my dwelling is because of this. And after 38 years, your heart can become hardened to a place of excusing His voice when your appointed time comes. Does this make sense? God comes to you and says, do this. And you say, I can't because I've been in that too long. I can't because this is my condition. I can't because I have nobody to roll me over into the pool. I... He didn't ask you if you could. He said, do you want to? My God. He didn't ask you if you could. He said, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made well? My God, if he knew you could, he wouldn't have come to you in the first place. He just lets you do. Come on, amen. He knows you can't. He knows that that was traumatic. He knows that that was a difficult. He knows your condition. He knows where it started. He knows how where, where your dwelling is now because of it. Amen. And he says, "To now the appointed time has come." Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Your heart can become hardened to a place of, ex of excusing His voice when your appointed time comes. Your condition, listen now, your condition will try and dictate your dwelling. He was at the pool of Bethesda because he was a paralytic, amen? 
He, 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 he had an infirmity. He was paralyzed. And he had a mat that he slept on. He had a bed that he laid on. And he was there all the time. Come on. His condition was dictating the dwelling place that he had been placed, maybe by his own doing, by some friends brought him there, or maybe society said, you can't even be over in here. You belong at Bethesda. Get over at Bethesda. How many times has society tried to come? You don't belong. Come on. Religion will do that too. Come on. Religion will do that too. You don't belong. Come on. Religion might have said that young lady can't get up and, and be on a praise team until she finishes. I don't know how long, what, what her condition was or how long it was. Come on. Amen. Religion might say, well, you got to be qualified this way, that, and the other to get up there and lead in a worship team. Come on. Get out, religion. You're not going to dictate what my step is next. I only move by the voice of the Lord. Come on. Amen. Your condition will try and dictate your dwelling. And over time, listen now, over time, if allowed, it will harden your heart to a place of unbelief. I, do you want to be made well? I got nobody to take me down there. That then produces excuse when your appointed time comes. It can lead to a heart of unbelief that will then produce excuse. When your appointed time comes. Why didn't they enter into his rest? It was due to their disobedience. Which was rooted in unbelief. That it produced from a hardened heart. This is just the way it is. That's what religion would try to tell you. That's what society would like to tell you. That's what, that's what every demon of hell would try to tell you to keep you from moving forward with God. But I'm telling you right now, I don't care if it's been 38 years, if it's been six months, if it's been two days. God has a plan for your life and appointed time. And when His voice comes, Amen. Numbers 13, 25 through 33. After exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel at Kadesh in the wilderness of Paran. They reported to the whole community what they had seen and showed them the fruit that they had taken from the land. This was their report to Moses. We entered the land you sent us to explore, and it is indeed a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of fruit it produces. But the people living there are powerful. Their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants there. The descendants of Andy. The Amalekites live in the Negev. Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites live in the hill country. The Canaanites live along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and along the Jordan Valley. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once to take the land. We could certainly conquer it. But the other men who explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They are, my God. Never did he say you can, you just need to depend on your condition. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Never anywhere did he say you need to just trust on your condition and depend on your condition. Come on. No, 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 no. He said, trust me. The battle is not yours. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? They are stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. The land we travel through and explore will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw there were huge. We even saw giants there in the sense of Annex next to, next to them. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers. And that's what they thought too. They agreed. <laughs> Amen. Society agreed that this man of 38 years in his condition belonged right there at the pool. You don't belong out here with anybody. That's where you, you know, that's your condition. They missed rest due to excuse that was rooted in their current condition. I don't know what God's voice is fixing to tell you to do in your life. But when his voice comes, amen. Come on, when his voice comes, obey. Obey. Well, what if he asked me to do that? Listen to me. He knows your condition. Amen. It, the Bible says in John 5, he knew his condition. Amen. Don't let your condition dictate your dwelling. Come on, somebody. 
Amen. It would have been a lot easier to leave my job if I had five million dollars in the bank. God knew my condition when he came to me to tell me to leave. He knew it. Amen. Come on. He knows it. Listen to me. He knows your condition. And he has a place of promised rest for your life. He wants, he desires so wildly to move you into this place called rest that the kingdom might manifest through your life and his glory would be known that men, women, boys, and girls will. You don't think six months from now God's going to surround people in my life and say, man, how's it going since you left? And the glory of God's going to flow to their life. Yes. Amen. And they're going to say, man, God, God must be real. He must actually speak to people. Yes. Amen. I know that's a phenomenon in, in, in East Tennessee, but it's true, guys. God speaks to His people. Amen. Aren't you glad for the cross, amen? That at the moment of the cross that Jesus' life wasn't taken, he freely laid it down that that big old thick curtain in the temple rent in two, allowing me and you to boldly approach the throne of grace when we have need of it most. God speaks to his people. Man. And he sent me this morning to tell you he desires to, what does it look like in my life pastor I have no idea I don't know I just know what his voice said to me and we're walking this now in experience to be able to teach you that our lives are moving into a place of rest and the word of the Lord says this that today is the day also of rest for you God's rest. God's way. Amen. Not what society would say. This is what you do next. This is what you got to have next. This is. Come on. The kingdom way. Amen. His way. His glory. He said we look like grasshoppers. Yeah. They were shorter than those guys. God knew that. <laughs> Amen. God knows your condition. God knows where you're at. And when your appointed time comes, don't make excuse. Well, I can't. Listen to me. Don't go away sorrowful. Don't go away sorrowful. What must I do to be saved? Do this, 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 and I've done all that for my youth up. Sell all you have and follow me. And he went away. What? Sad. Why? Because those things had such a grip on his heart. There was such a hardness of heart by the things, by the material things of his world. That when the voice of the Lord came to his life, he walked away in disobedience. God knows your condition. He knows what you've been through. He knows your dwelling. He knows your dwelling place right now. He knows your condition when he comes. And when he says move, don't make excuse. Well, I, uh, 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 listen to me. I'm telling you the truth today. Don't make excuse. Just do what he says. Just do what he says. Just do what he says. Come on, amen. It says this, the sick man answered, Sir, I have no man to put me. I've got a condition. I, I, I ain't had anybody for all these years. And I don't have anybody now. I'm telling you, God's ready to move your life forward from all of those years back. Somebody needs to get that today. Whatever happened all them years back in that condition you've been carrying all in, God's ready for you to get over that. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He's ready for you to move into rest from that. He's ready to move in from heat to healing from that. Hey, come on, he's ready. This is your time. Don't miss it. The appointed time is not only coming to our lives, it's coming to this call. And when he says go, we must go. Amen. What did he tell us to do earlier in the year? He says, when the cross scene comes for your life, follow without hesitation. Do what he says and keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. 
I have no man to put me in the water. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. Aren't you glad for God's grace? I had some grace that first week when God said it's time for you to go. I had some grace because I wallowed around in the intensity of the moment as chains were breaking over my life, but I had some grace. Aren't you glad for some grace? Amen. I had some grace. This man made an excuse. I got nobody. I ain't never had nobody. I don't have anybody today. This is my condition. But Jesus said to him, in grace, rise. The voice still came. Amen. Rise. Take up your bed and walk. And what happened? The glory of the Lord manifested. And immediately the man was made well and took up his bed and walked. Amen. Come on, worship team. What's this all about, Pastor? I can tell you in just a few seconds here. The, the Lord sent me today to tell you His voice is coming to your life. In perfected, appointed timing. Remember, there's a time for every activity under heaven. It may not have happened when you wanted it to. It may not have been quick enough. It's, you may not even think it's been long enough. Come on, amen. Let me stay another five years, God. I get 25 in. No. There's a perfected, appointed time for every activity. This man, after 38 years, his appointed time showed up by the voice of the Lord. He said he heard a voice. The voice of the Lord came. Yeah, he made an excuse, but God's grace is good. He said, rise up, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well. He took up his bed and walked. You know the rest of the story he goes down because this happens on the Sabbath day, right? He's walking with his mat. Because, hallelujah, aren't you glad? Because his dwelling place is changing. <laughs> Amen. His dwelling place is changing. And the religious elite of the day, they had a problem with it. You can't do that. You can't, you can't move your mat on the Sabbath. You can't. Come on. My God. I pray the Holy Spirit breaks out in this place right here, right now, and you pick up your mat and walk on the Sabbath. Come on, somebody. Come on. Yeah. It says you can't move your mat on the Sabbath. That's against the law. You can't work on the Sabbath. Who, who told you to do this? This man that made me well. Jesus gets accused. He said, you can't be doing healing on the Sabbath. And I'm here to sit here to tell you this morning, Jesus' answer to them, I'm paraphrasing, but Jesus' answer to them says, I'm working and my Father's always working. We're always working. That's what He says. He says, we're always working. Listen to me. You may be in a condition for some time now and you think, well, God, are you still working? I'm, gonna tell, I'm here to tell you the rest of this story. Read it. The rest of this story, Jesus gives an answer and says, we're always working. I'm always working. And he sent me to tell you this morning that there's an appointed time. A time for the activity of your life under heaven. He's coming in his voice. Well, I can't do that. I've been this for this long or I've been that for that long or I've done this for this long. Listen. Don't let your current condition from the past or right now dictate your dwelling place because I'm telling you he's come to move you higher he's come to move you in a place called what rest the appointed time has come that's why the Lord says turn stand with me turn to me now while there is time this is what the Lord is saying this morning. turn to me now while there's time What's the foundational understanding of missing the moment of rest? A hardened heart. A hardened heart that is gripped, that produces unbelief, that produces disobedience, that produces you not entering into rest. So this is what the Lord says, turn to me now while there is time. Give me what? Give me what? Your hearts. 
Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Don't tear your, don't do a religious thing. Don't tear your clothing or but tear your hearts instead. Amen. Get in the secret place and rend your heart before the Lord. Father, I give, I give you my heart. Take me wherever you want to take me. Do with whatever you want to do with me, Father. Because I know you got rest for me. Return to the Lord your God for He's merciful and compassionate. Amen. Aren't you glad? Amen. He was merciful and compassionate to the man that made an excuse. He's merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with what? That unfailing love. He's eager to relent, not punish. Who knows? Perhaps He will give you a reprieve, send you a blessing instead of curse. Perhaps you'll be able to offer grain and wine to the Lord as your God before. Blow the ram's horn of Jerusalem. Announce a time of fasting. Call the people together for a solemn meeting. Gather all the people, the elders and children, even the babies. Call them. He says, get it. Come on. He said, get everybody's attention. My God, I feel the Holy Spirit. He says, get everybody's attention. Call the bride groom out. Call the bride out. Call the children. Call everybody out. Let the priests who minister in the Lord's presence stand and weep between the entry room to the temple and the altar. Let them pray. Spare your people, Lord. Don't let your special possession become an op. Come on. We speak this over the church of God today. Amen. The church of the Lord today. Spare your people, Lord. Don't let your special possession become an object of mockery. Don't let them become a joke for unbelieving foreigners to say, has the God of Israel left them? Come on. That's not the Lord's desire for, the, for His church to become a mockery. It's the Lord's desire for the unbelieving foreigners to walk by and say, What's going on in there? My God, what is that? We need more of... Come on, man. Yes. How is it that they will see that? A people obedient to His voice, moving in His rest, and seeing the supernatural power of God flow through every part of our lives. Well, how did you do that? Well, how did that take place? That's what they're going to ask. And we're going to say unto him who is well able. Yes. Because it sure wasn't us. Because when he came to us, boy, we was in a condition. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, we was in a condition. And we may not even deserve the dwelling that we're in now. But I'm going to tell you right now, he loves you with an unfailing yes. love. Yes. He's merciful and compassionate. And oh, he he wants to do so much for you. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. There's an appointed time coming. Amen. It's coming to your life. If you don't move into rest, it's because you've been disobedient to the voice. I say, rend your heart this morning. I say, let the Holy Spirit open up your heart. If there's anything, Father, come on. Come on, the voice of the Lord is coming to your life. And he says this, don't harden your hearts. Come on, just be obedient to the voice of the Lord. He's fixing to move beyond your imagination. I believe that with all of my heart. Father, we thank you that you're announcing today. Hallelujah. You're announcing today that the appointed time is coming to our lives. Lord, it will come by your voice unto us. Lord, I pray that a people today, Lord, I pray that a people today would move into the secret place with you. That they would, Lord, your people can know the next chapter of their lives. I feel with everything that is within me, you keep saying this week, the next chapter, the next chapter, the next chapter. Father, you're working this call to the next chapter of its existence of why you called us out. You're moving us into the next chapter. But Lord, not only this call, you're moving our lives into the next chapter. Lord, you've written every page of our lives and it's come to a season, an appointed time for the page to turn. Father, we're very grateful and thankful. Lord, I pray that you would massage our hearts to hear your voice. And Lord, you've instructed us just be obedient. You've got the rest. You've got the rest of the rest. Father, I pray that you would help us today. Lord, in your unfailing love and your compassion and mercy, help us today. Father, 
We may let black grasshoppers to the giants on the other side. But we say today, you are well able. Father, we may look like nothing coming out of the backfield to stand before the giants of our region. Lord, we may look like it to them. We may look like it in our own eyes. But we say you are well able. You're well able. Lord, we will not allow anything about us to dictate our next step. Because that's you that's got it. Not us. Father, when you came, I didn't know what to do next. And you've got it. Thank you. We'll give you